You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Bridges with your host, Dr. Paul. From the studies of traditional and alternative methods in martial arts, natural sciences, to further his knowledge of the holistic sciences, author Dr. Paul is here to help promote clarity and understanding and to help facilitate making informed decisions. You learn to trust yourself, opening you up to a new world of connection, relationships, and care. So please welcome the host of Bridges, Dr. Paul Dyer. Hey, welcome to another evening with Dr. Paul and Bridges here on the BBM Global Network. Remember that you can always hear us every Monday at 8 p.m. And those of you who are catching the podcast on Thursdays at 877-475-8570. Remember, you can click on the link and you can listen to the podcast every Thursday. It comes out every Thursday. Welcome back to Bridges. It's been a beautiful, beautiful week, and I hope you all had a beautiful week. But as time grows darker to many people in the United States, we can we tend to get a little bit off center and gloomy for many reasons. And many reasons, as we always as I say, is that we have emotional disconnect. And Bridges, to let you know, if you haven't heard, if this is your first time, welcome. And I also like to say thank you for all your emails throughout the week about the show and, and how it's touched your lives. And I really appreciate that. But Bridges is supposed to bring you from here to there. And that's why we cross them. Your knowledge to your understanding. Your understanding to an action. But also is to you to gather your thoughts about the information you're hearing and hopefully it not just touches you. Because this is not like a 60-minute show and I don't want it to get there or anything like that. But it life is about emotional action. And we... As people that have been developing in this training for a long time, we don't remove our emotions. We accept them. I like to associate every show with a bridge. And this bridge is the Arlington Memorial Bridge. I just got back from D.C. and I was out there on an amazing event, seminar, um, the International Hall of Honors, Hall of Champions, um, dinner, banquet, um, another honor. I love being well with my brothers and, and sisters and the martial arts family. But more importantly, I was out there in D.C., and I like going out to D.C. in the Maryland, Virginia area, because around that area has so much significance in our country, in our nation. Obviously, we know that the capital's there. But more important there is the people who serve this country and the people who have laid to rest in all parts of this country and the world fighting for our freedom. I served in the service. I know what it is like to hit boots on the ground. So also my human rights is the freedom of thought. Human reaction, human interaction, but freedom of thought. When you have thoughts, you have emotions. When you have emotions, you have a connection. My guest tonight is a dear friend, a close brother, and he's a senior to me. And I'm so happy to he obliged to come on the air in his busy life. Grandmaster Hud Hullison is a pioneer in the martial arts. He's a, well, we'll talk to him. Hud, come on in, Grandmaster. Yes, sir, Dr. Dreyer. How are you, sir? I'm calling I'm- from Seattle, Washington. And, and we're glad to have you. And I know um, here in the East Coast, we had a little bit of rain. But in Seattle, you must have more rain. We, uh, you have to have web feet to live here, actually. We have <laughs> rain constantly. I mean, it sunshines, blue sky, and it still rains. 
you know, there's no cloud, but we do get the rain. I don't know where, where it comes from, but actually, yes, we do have a lot of rain here. Now, sir, I don't want, and yes, he is my sir. He's my senior. Yeah, he's my brother. He is um, a, a dear friend. But yet, in martial arts families, we have seniors, we have teachers, and we're always learning. We're, we're, we're the lifelong student. And the reason why, I always have reasons of why I bring people on, because, again, I want you to understand something. You think you may have knowledge of things, but here in Bridges, I want you to understand it. So I hope you have your notebooks out, because Grandmaster Hud Hullison is going to teach you. Now, you are, now, we'll get into an amazing life that you've had being in the Vietnam era, being a soldier, but you're, you're also, your martial arts legendary is incredible in the Korean martial arts. And I brought you on cause I want to talk about the real life of martial arts and what it does to yeah, save sure. lives. Now, before we get into the life of here in the United States, let's, t- let's go back a little bit and just tell a little bit about yourself and then I'm going to ask you the questions to really pull some of that out of you but tell us a little bit about what you want us to know sir well um, I've got a a grand attitude in life not giving up I'm a polio survivor from the 50s and I acquired uh, polio my sister and I both got it when I, I got it when I was 16 months old after I was born in 1949 during the epidemic. And they said, no, this child will never uh, function, will never, never be normal, will not uh, be a child as other childs are, and uh, won't be able to do anything. And I ended up with an attitude like, well, you tell me no, and I'm going to do whatever you tell me no. And I've got a great attitude. I've done multiple, multiple things in my life, occupations, everything, just to prove the fact to myself and the world that polio is not going to put me down. Mm-hmm. So that's where my life started out at the beginning. So it, wow. when you started out with that, no one's ever going to tell you that. Let's let's get into the war that's now I think millennials have probably completely forgotten about. But like I said, when I was just out in D.C. and being around the National Cemetery and seeing that area over there, and that's why the show is called the Arlington Memorial Bridge, let's go into um, when you entered the service and tell us what you did in the service, sir. Well, um, our family is uh, totally military. We're complete patriots, and uh, we won't go political on this. We're not uh, Republicans or uh, liberals, we are totally patriots. We've been fighting war, uh, all the wars. We've got military records going all the way back to the Revolutionary War. Father was Sergeant Major, 32 years of World War II. And the son is uh, serving right now in Fort Benning, Georgia. He's an Iraqi and uh, also an Afghanistan veteran. He just got promoted. He's seven. He's down in Fort Benning where I took my cool, job uh... training. And uh, uh, during my period of time in uh, uh, 1966, when I joined, I looked around when I was very young and coming out of high school, and friends were going to Vietnam and fighting the war. And then we had the draft dodgers and uh, many other people running away from the war, getting divert, divert, uh, deferments uh, from uh, college and that. And I, I couldn't stand there and say, hey, uh, well, I got a problem. I got polio. I was still under doctor care. I, I, I got this and that, and I decided that, uh, that I had to go. I had to serve, and I joined when I was 17 years old. But how I got there it was just because I was still under medical care with my polio. My father, being a sergeant major, a high-ranking sergeant major, he had quite a, uh, quite a pull in the military and well-known. I um, decided I'd better join now before the draft got me because if the draft got me, then I would have to go through a thorough medical examination and they would have 4F me right out of the military. So my father and my mother signed me in. I got through through the back door and was able to join the military without them even knowing I had polio. And I had to serve. Um, you know, it, it, everybody else was uh, still. So, so but as... Well, 
Joining the military, as I joined, I raised my hand also. We're going to come back to Grandmaster Hunter Hullison, and we're going to get and talk about his Vietnam experiences. Hey, I want you to know you're listening to Bridges with your host, Dr. Paul, on the BBM Global Network. Remember, you can always call us in for a question if you have a question at 877-475-8570. We'll be right back. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.betterhomeandgarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. Betterhomeandgarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. Betterhomeandgarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, betterhomeandgarden.com. Betterhomeandgarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor covering, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Welcome back to Bridges. I'm your host, Dr. Paul. Remember, you can always give us a call here, 877-475-8570. And our bridge today is the Arlington Memorial Bridge. And our human rights charter number 18 is freedom of thought. You can say freedom of thought. You can say freedom of religion or freedom of relief. But it's freedom of thought. Remember, bring your thoughts into your expression to let you have that connection. We're talking to a dear friend of mine, Grandmaster Hut Hullison. He is just a pioneer in Korean martial arts. Um, if you didn't know anything about martial arts, and that's okay, but we're really going to pull you into understanding why we practice what we do as warriors of this life, of this plane. I want you to understand that what Grandmaster Hollison was talking about by contracting polio gave him a mindset. He made a decision, and his decision was, it's not going to stop me. From that decision to join the military, and then now we're in the war in 1966 and then jumping into Vietnam. But you were stationed in Cambodia, right, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, well, because of my age being 17, they wouldn't allow, uh, uh, allow 17-year-olds to be stationed in the Vietnam era in that uh, territory due to the media, if they caught that, they would have, uh, they had a lot of problems with Vietnam back home. And if they had found the uh, 17 year olds in that war, that would have caused even more problems. So off I went into what they called the secret wars that, that even my family didn't even know I was there. So I ended up in a recon team in Cambodia. And then that, after Cambodia, I, I volunteered to go to uh, South Korea because they were looking for men to go there during the 60s when North Korea was uh, causing problems. There was almost like a war in uh, Vietnam, and they covered up that era of uh, the war in, in Korea that started back up again. They didn't want the society to even know that uh, the Americans were fighting two wars on two fronts at that point. Wow. So a lot of us volunteered to go to Korea on the zone and run recon there. Now, being in the, you were in the long range recon team, wasn't you? You were alert, wasn't you? Yes, sir. You want yes, to tell sir. people? It's called long range. 
Long Range Recon Patrol, LRRP, or they nicknamed us LERPs. Now, to to be a LERP, you had so many skill sets that most of the LERPs, most people don't know what a long range recon, but you're so far away from other people, your your skills had to be always on point. Yes, sir. Uh, we've, uh, we had jungle warfare training, special weapons training, multiple uh, training that was actually uh, uh, foundation of the special forces, and then later... The LERPs were con- uh, were converted to the Ranger Battalion, the 75th Ranger Battalion, yep. in 1968 in Ireland. And that, uh, that uh, you know, being a LERP, you don't want to be nothing else. I mean, they actually, the U.S. Army converted the whole LERP teams into the Ranger divisions, and a lot of us didn't want anything to do with it. We are LERPs, and that's who we are. We're not, we didn't consider ourselves as Rangers. But we did have the same type of training and everything. Well, that's where we had that connection because we're we're one and the same. So, as as now being in the service, you got injured. You want to tell us about that injury? Yes, sir. I've uh, I, a lot of people say, "Why are you wearing dark glasses all the time?" Well, my eyes were uh, were injured in an explosion that. Uh, I was uh, on base camp, and uh, we had trucks loaded with uh, HE rounds from artillery and that. And they were lo- they were uh, pulling up their trucks, uh, diesel and uh, gas and that, in, in the field dump. And uh, uh, I have to watch what I say. But the uh, enemy, I can we had words for them. But anyway, uh, they threw a grenade in on top of the fuel dump and it blew up and everything went straight to hell and all the truckers jumped out and ran away from their trucks leaving the trucks all in line one truck was inside the fuel dump and it caught fire and exploded and i ran up everybody was dodging the fire and you name it it's just part of the deal and you i ran up and grabbed each truck and backed it up individually to get them out of there because each truck had all this HE rounds and powder in it. And if it would have uh, hit all, if that fire hit all of them, it would have blown the compound and all of us straight to hell. I ran up and removed each truck back up and I got into the one that was actually sitting in the field dump and I cranked it into reverse and all hell broke loose and the ball of fire broke through the, and shattered the front windshield and I was engulfed in flames. You couldn't see the flames. It was so it was a flash fire. Hurt my eyes, and my eyes don't dilate normally like other people do. I get the full blast. If I'm driving at night, and uh, headlights hit me straight on, I'm totally blind. But my eyes don't dilate, and that's the reason why I wear dark glasses. Another time, it's in a bunker, and they threw a, a satchel charge in and blew the thing, and ended up losing my hearing and that. And uh, there's many, you know, my body's been really, really taken to the to the hill to hell and back. And I've got other injuries from from that uh, war, as with, you know, in Cambodia and straight into uh, Korea. Now you were also, you know, I. I... The reason why, people, I want you to hear not just the story and say, oh, no, um, Grandmaster Hutter Hulls, and what, what, look at what he's been through and how sad it is. And all. I want you to get past that. You, you don't understand what we do. We do it for passion. We do it for love. We do it for honor. We don't, don't feel sorry for the things that soldiers go through. But here's, we're going to get, now you were also um, shot, too. Yes, sir. I was shot on a, a tri- on a, a trail up in the Cambodia Highlands. Sniper got me, and I just have to take a breather there for a second because right now November, December is kind of a hard time to get through. I know, so, sir. Uh, We're anyway, going to take us. A... I just we... have to take a breather. Breather for second on that note because yeah. that's my bad times. I got hit what? by a sniper. He was up in the tree line and he got me from behind. Uh, around uh, 
and I've got a hole in my back, and it came home. Hold on, sir. We'll we'll come right back to that, and we're gonna let Grandmaster her house and take a little breather. We'll be back. You listen to Bridges on the BBM Global Network. Global Glory. That's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first generation British born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Welcome back to Bridges. You listen to Bridges with your host, Dr. Paul. On the BBM Global Network, we like to bring you relatively good content. And this content we're talking about in all of my shows at Bridges is to bring you from here to there. And my friend, Grandmaster Hutter Hullison, who I'm most dear, my brother in my heart, brothers in arms in so many ways. He was talking about his explosion, how he got hit in the eyes and how he was blinded and how he was just recently shot. And November is a tough time for a lot of us. And I want, because Bridges is about understanding your emotions. And that's why when I talk to my friend and I talk to him often, I said, you know, I want people to understand what we really are as warriors, as martial artists, as martial scientists, and why we do what we do because it heals lives. Now, go ahead, sir. Finished. Um, you just recently got shot, and it blew out um, a part of your body. Continue. Well, uh, the actual shot went. Uh, it was from an AK-47 sniper rifle, and it got me in the back, upper right side, just below the shoulder blade, and it went straight down from the angle of the tree line. Shot. He was either hiding up in a tree and shot. Got me from behind, and it came out front two inches beside my belly button. I've still got a scar, and I've got a big hole in the back. I just recently came out of the hospital uh, just uh, about a month and a half ago to have it all reconstructed, and they found a tumor, and that down in the lower uh, colon area from all this. And they, my intestines were really scrambled. They, you know, back in those days, when you're out in the field hospital, they just throw you together, sew you up, and hand your weapon if you can still breathe and walk you're right back in so by the time i get back in my recon unit i'm still in stitches in that so they everything was scrambled inside i've had problems with it all this time the va has been wanting me to come back to re-scramble my intestines and blew everything out right from the front from that round coming through me and that, and now, now it's been reconstructed uh, just about a month and a half ago. I'm still recuperating from surgery, and I'm feeling good. And, and you're still uh, back on the mat. <laughs> and, yes, and you sir. were still recently. Yes, sir. And I told you to take it easy. You're like, I'm going right back on the mat. I'm throwing some people around. So. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. You know, the doctor said, uh, you, you know, you got uh, about two, two and a half months, maybe. 
uh, to recuperate. And I said, I'm the wild man. You can't keep me down. I mean, the polio didn't put me down. And this little stitch across my stomach, about 10 inches across, and they pulled everything out and put it back in. And they said, no, no, I'll bet you I'll be back in two weeks. I was back teaching and driving my BMW in two weeks. <laughs> but it was hurting. Yes, they had to sew me inside and out just to put everything back together again. And yes, I've been back on the uh, floor teaching and um, doing what I do, but I haven't gone back on the street. I carry a badge and that chasing bad guys. And I just, that uh, that part of it, no, I didn't, haven't gone back to that yet, but I did get a call um, a couple of weeks ago to do a surveillance job for, oh, what was it, uh, four days on a continuous and just luckily it uh, fell through and they canceled it. I would have done it. I mean, no problem. But, uh, you know, you have to spend time in the car following people. For... So, <laughs> no, I, I, I don't get so up. That... I don't uh, find my soup and say, oh, poor baby. But, no, I got attitudes with my polio. And, you, you know, you can't put me down. So, sir, so, now I want anyway. to get into most people don't really truly understand martial arts and not martial science. Now, martial arts saved my life. It healed me from my personal yep. Emotional wounds, physical wounds also. Tell us about what martial arts really is and how it saved your life. Well, coming back in 69, you know, you come back in the, uh, back in the 60s and you come back to this country and, you know, we're, we're extreme patriots, our family. We took the oath and we will protect and serve. And I've been protecting and serving ever since I came out. In uh, 69, I came back, and I opened up in 1970, opened up the first pure and true Warang uh, school in North America. And a lot of guys are coming back. We're coming back to hatred. The country didn't want us. Our family threw us away. I mean, we were just, uh, just really dog shit when we came back. No matter where you came from in the service and where you served, you were wearing the uniform and you were hated. You called baby killers and on and on and on. I can go on a deep conversation on that part of it. But getting back to what your question was, what did they do for me? A lot of guys come back. They had drugs. They were on heroin. They were uh, they were on alcohol. You know, the alcoholics, they became criminals or ended up in prison or they committed suicide. Multiple, multiple, many veterans commit suicide. And today... 22, that, 22 veterans a day commit suicide right now. That's the estimate right now. So it's pretty bad back there. Your wife threw you away and all that. So at that point, I myself, I don't drink. I don't drink alcohol, never have. I don't even know what beer tastes like. I don't smoke and, and I don't even drink coffee. So what brought me out of all that, out of that hell, was my martial arts. It kept me alive. That's kept me from going off the deep end and going into all these drugs and becoming a criminal or whatever. The martial arts was my life and it saved my life coming back to stay away from all that nightmare and, the, and everything that happened to all the other veterans that came back during the Vietnam War. So, now the troop, now the troop yeah, practice... I like, what well, are the... One of the true practices of martial arts, and most people always look at the physical, and the physical is so easy to see, but that emotional level, how it trains us to be at peace, even though we go through hard times at, from month to month, year to year, or moments to moments, we we pull back into that training. Teach us about that training, of how even even you, even now, there's times where it gets sad and, and, and dark about the times but yet the training still kicks in. Tell us about that. Well, a lot of people in the martial art world uh, work on the physical and forget about the spiritual. The spiritual is uh, the most part, the most important part of the martial arts. You start out in the physical aspect of it, and then you you put together your spiritual within your soul. And, and uh, physical mind and body has to come together as three. And once it becomes three, then you've accomplished that one, bringing all of it together as a foundation in the martial art world. And this is being this is being forgotten in the martial art world. All they care about is physically, 
physical aspect of martial arts, go out and beat on somebody, uh, win the biggest trophy, and we're losing the traditional arts in the world of martial arts today. Everybody wants a fast track. They want to get their belt real quick. I mean, you can get your black belt in a year, or you can walk into Walmart and buy one, as we say. But, you know, <laughs> in, in, the old, in the old days, you know, I mean, the old days, you would uh, you would have to work for that black belt. That black belt, I mean, like in Korea, the old days, uh, not during my period of time, but before that, you would only Hold get on, a sir. white belt. Hold on, sir. We're going to come right back to that. You listen to Bridges on the BBM Global Network. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Welcome back to Bridges. I'm your host, Dr. Paul. You're listening to Bridges on the BBM Global Network. Remember, you can tune in every Monday at 8 p.m. live, or you can catch the podcast that comes out on Thursday at the same link. Click it on, and the link will be there, and you can listen to the show over and over. We're talking with Grandmaster Hud Hudson, and we talked about how he, as he grew up, won his polio, and this is a short polio, and then into how he changed his mindset from a patriot, joined the military, having lots of war wounds besides getting a flash and being legally blind and his back blown out and damaged his internal organs. And being a, a martial artist for a very long time, he started the only true Hwang, uh, which is a Korean martial arts in the United States in the 70s. But the martial arts practice it's not just a physical practice, it's an emotional practice, it's a mental practice, it's a spiritual practice. And this is why we teach what we teach. And it takes hard work. And sir, you were talking about the hard work that is discarded these days on those on those levels. Can't continue, sir. Yes, sir. The uh, training that happened in, in Korea when I trained in Korea in the 60s, Back then, you know, before I actually entered the Dojang, you would only get a white belt. And that white belt would stay with you the rest of your life. As you're training, and as what I say on my floor, you either puke up, pass out, or die on the floor, then you're good. Well, in Korea, <laughs> it's the same type of thing, even harder. And that belt would, uh, would change colors and yeah. eventually turn to a black belt. Down. I mean, we're not talking tomorrow. We're not talking six months later. We're talking years later, and that belt would turn to a black color. And then they would uh, signify that you are a black belt and nothing else. They would call you a black belt. That's it. And uh, later on, as the as the Korean system uh, added the colors, then we had the uh, the white, yellow, uh, green, blue, and red. Red the same as the brown in Japanese art, and then into the black belt. 
it took it took time and training to get to that point to even wear the white belt. I mean, you couldn't even wear a white belt at the beginning. They, you had to earn the white belt. And But people are forgetting that once you're a white belt, you're always a white belt. You're always yeah. a student. You're always learning continuously. Too many people get the black belt stuck on them in a year. They stand up on the podium. They think they can float on water. They can walk <laughs> on water. And then, then they think they're almighty. And unfortunately, they forgot their direction. They forgot the path of way. Way is that you are a student from the day that you start and the day you take your last breath on earth. And the day right. that you decide that you're an expert, you've lost your path. Because I'm, and no matter what rank I am, I can take my ranks and tie them off, and I'm still a student no matter what. No I'm matter what. what. When I'm teaching. Absolutely. And, now, with, oh, with you, many, yeah, go ahead, when, when you just got out of the hospital, I called you while you were in the hospital, and I said, I said, how are you doing, sir? You said, I'm doing good. I'm like, sir, you just, you just got out of the hospital. He goes, I said, are you going to take any medication? And this is what he said. Remember how you're like, I don't do those damn things. <laughs> I said, I said, sir, yeah. wh- how are you going to feel about it? He goes, I got my martial arts. I am good. So you want to tell people about how yeah. you can connect, how you, how your life is about that living. And pain is not just physical, but we have a lot of emotional pain that we work through in our martial arts. Pain is part of training. Pain, if you do not train in pain, you you have no path in the martial art world. If you want to apply techniques, you've got to understand the pain, study the pain, know the pain, feel the pain to apply pain. And too many people in the martial art world throwing technique around don't even know if it works or not. And pain becomes part of your training of hard training to make yourself be able to endure the pains of life. And too many people are fast-tracked in the martial art world, and they once they get into life and they give up on hard things that come at them. Uh, To me, I can't, I I don't understand. You know, it really really bothers me to see people give up so quick on training because of what I've gone through with polio. And if I can do it, what is wrong with you? And I look at people that come into my school, and I've been teaching since 1970, and they give up on the easiest thing or the pain is too hard. Now, I'm talking about pain. When you train in martial arts, you got to understand that if you're going to apply pain, you got to study the pain and feel the pain and understand it. And many, and, many can't take that type of old training anymore. And, I, and, and, the and, and on, they've got to put all the heavy equipment on, and, and most of so and, so most of the people are yeah. listening to this. They think it's a physical pain, and it's not just a physical pain. Mo- when you training, you have to dig into your own self and bring out your 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 deepest darkest fears to bring it out to clean it out. Coach Cheryl, I know you're on the line. Come on in, and I want Coach Cheryl. You've been listening to the show, and so what do you think is – so welcome, Coach Cheryl. I just, I'm just i just so excited sometimes to have, you know, Grandmaster Hud Hulson on and then you come in. So tell us what you've been listening to. Uh, hi. Good evening, everyone. And um, it is truly an honor to, um, you know, witness and listen to your story, um, Grandmaster. I, I, you know, I really and truly – the thing that, that comes to mind about, you know, being able to deal with the pain – and whether or not it's physical or it's um, that mental pain is whether or not there's different processes of reality that actually allows you to not have any physical sensation with the pain, but um, so that you can kind of rise above whatever that physical sensation might be. I, that is, it's just phenomenal to me. So we're going to come back, and we're going to finish up. We're going to take another break. I uh, just want to listen, you listen to Bridges and our shows, the Arlington Memorial Bridge, and our human rights this is freedom of thought. We'll be right back after this break, and I'm your host, Dr. Paul. 
The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Col des Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Welcome back to Bridges. I'm your host, Dr. Paul, and you're listening on the BBM Global Network. We're talking with Grandmaster Hud Hullison. We have Coach Cheryl on the line also. And the show is about the Arlington Memorial Bridge and the human rights. It's the freedom of thought. We're talking with Grandmaster Hud Hullison, and with all the things you've been through, sir, and as a soldier as myself, and we, we've talked about this, and we are, we're just we're so synced up in brotherhood. It's, it's, it's amazing. Besides, I mean, with a lot of things. And on the eve of what we call these midterm elections and where people will find themselves in a lot of turmoil, whether it be a synagogue bombing, whether it be a church bombing, whether it be a yoga studio bombing, whether it be people getting killed for all kinds of reasons. And people living in fear, fear of their own selves, fear of their own pain. And listening to you, I hope people understand. That's why I do Bridges, so people can get themselves from here to there. I don't want you to discard your pain. I want you to understand your pain. I want you to understand the connection you have with it because there's a way to get through it. There's a training process that you can get through it. So, sir, leave us with a training tool that we can work on because that's really what I want Bridges to be is to help people understand. Yes, they heard your story, but what should they understand, what they can do? There's many things in the martial art uh, in the old traditional world that, Spiritual training is part of the martial art world. I teach a lot of kids that are extreme autism in that. And and I had one young boy who did sign language. The only way he could talk. The only way he could put forth communication between everybody. And I had him on the on the floor. My wife is a, is a master uh, from Korea, and she trains under me. And we both worked on him. And by the time it was over... We had this young man actually talking verbally and making statements and oh, saying wow. actual sentencing, and the parents were just ecstatic with it, and they couldn't believe what happened. They'd been through many medical therapists and everything, and they said, it's just incredible what you guys do on this floor. It's not only the physical. Mm -hmm. uh, physical comes last. It's all inside your soul to establish your martial art world. The spiritual part of, uh, of the old school is being lost on the floor. All, everybody is just, all they care about is beating on each other or going out and starting a fight or something or becoming a bully. Bully is another thing. It's another story in itself. But mm. The spiritual foundation of the martial arts, the way, find your way, uh, find your comfort, find, find out who you are and become a true martial artist, not by beating on each other. Spiritual aspect, 
the uh, the Warang, the foundation Warang was Buddhism, and uh, we don't teach it on the floor, but both my wife and I are Buddhists, and we do fall, fall out. We go to the temple, and and I teach that on the floor, the spiritual aspect of the martial arts. Yes, we I teach an extreme offensive art to cripple, maim, or if you have to kill, but you have to have the spiritual behind it to understand what you're doing in your life to carry on to the point of when you exit the world. The spiritual has to be there. Otherwise, you have no martial arts. Thank you so much, sir. I love you. I love your dear friend, and we'll talk later. But you have a good afternoon. And again, say hello to your wife for me, and I will see you soon. You will, and I thank you, and we love you too, and thank you for everything. And everybody be safe and have a very uh, happy holidays. And we're here in Seattle. All care. right, Cheryl, go ahead. Do you come on? Um, what do you? I I'm kind of I'm torn up right now because I know that the, what we go through, most people misunderstand, and they think that we're chasing something, but we're really trying to give that part of our lives so you can live better so uh, yeah ahead Cheryl yeah I, I think you know it's so very commendable to to um, be able to listen and and share the experiences everything that we're doing is 100% an effort to uh, provide a testimony and um, a testimony as in an experience that others can learn from at all times um, and practice that are, that have been, you know, experienced and that people are working through and methodologies um, in transcendence that can support each other, that can support people's uh, ability to kind of get to the next, the next place and the next point. And, um, you know, the important thing is is to remember to, um, yeah, to nurture everything that's on the inside as well as the outside so that you know, we, we can endure. We, we talk so much, and it seems, and I don't want to be repetitive, but the compassion, the honor, the practice, but the education is so much needed for people to really get there. Because like right now, like I said before, we're on this like midterm election and people are very hostile in both accounts for many reasons, for whatever reason, but they're missing their own emotional connection to life. It's like they rather spew a lot of hatred than love. And that and that makes me sick in my own way, especially now that we have Veterans Day coming around and and so there's there's a lot of mixture going on here emotionally. Yeah. The thing to um being able to make sure that we stay uh, essential um you know to healthy living is to encourage empower as we empower ourselves encourage others as well. Um you know forgiveness is is the key and understanding that everyone is not at the same place at the same time. Um, but once we work together and we unify our efforts, then you do have the strength in numbers, you know, which which can can achieve and manifest great goals together. What's the one tip you want to leave us with for this week? I think, uh, you know, one of the things that's really important about we we should just learn uh, with every with ourselves that we're not perfect. Uh, we have bad days, you know. Um, bad days are are part of the process. Um, but what's really important is you know to stay intentional about always trying to evolve and grow um, better, and really you know digging within to help whatever that radiant light is that exists within ourselves. Um, to really help that to come out. And, and don't be so hard on ourselves on an ongoing basis because we are all a continual work in progress. And and that's and that's a thing we got to, and that's what even what Grandmaster Hud Hulson says, that, you know, as a martial artist, we are always a continuous student, a student of learning and living. And that's important to us. So 
Thanks, Coach Cheryl. We'll talk again next week. And you're listening to Bridges, and I'm your host, Dr. Paul. You can always give us a call, 877-475-8570. Thanks, Coach Cheryl. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various businesses interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Welcome back to Bridges. I'm your host, Dr. Paul. And the show is the Arlington Memorial Bridge. You were listening to Grandmaster Ed Hollison talk about his life and the reason why is because I want you to understand and once you first gain the knowledge and then pull up your understanding of why we do what we do and why we seek life the way we seek life, you can go through so many things, so many dark areas in your life, and you can still seek the light. And it takes a practice. Miss Cheryl education, practice. Grandmaster Hellison, it takes what you go through to a practice. You still got to continue to practice. Miss Ashley, Miss Ashley is at my little boots on the ground in Houston. How are you doing, girl? How was your, how was your week, Ben? It was good. It was good. Hello. Hello, everyone. Yes, it was great. Um, we just wrapped up a project in Louisiana for um, Al- Alton Sterling, the guy that got shot in Battle Baton Rouge by the cops. And, um, you know, um, that project was done by Miss Alex with Poetic Soul. She had a piece called Power of a Black Woman in that. So I just was wrapping that up in spite of, you know, my son. He's coming home and telling me about a big, really bad bully problem that he's been having at school. So, you know, like, you know, everybody, you know, talking about the seeing the light through everything. And that's what I'm trying to get my son to understand that it is um, light through what he's going through. And, but the schools are not even attempting to even let help like me and some organizations that I know, they keep giving us the runaround when I call up there and schedule a big meeting, you know, I'm never getting calls back. So that's what I've been dealing with, trying to get (laughs) some kind of communication going with um, putting this pro- putting these programs in these school systems to, to help these kids because my son is telling me about a lot of his friends that are contemplating on committing suicide. So it's a lot going on, Dr. Paul. So, and, um, you know, and with yeah. that suicide, and I think that's what we, you know, we constantly want to talk about. We can talk about it, but we definitely got to put some work in because we're losing lives. Right. We're losing soldiers' yeah. lives. We're losing people, yes, kids' are. lives. Yes. We're losing lives on the street. For what all reasons, we're losing life, and we are trying to teach life. But teaching life takes a practice, and we cannot just practice, yes. but people got to understand that you got to put in a a, a real mental and physical action to save a life. Exactly. 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 And that's and like the, you know, um, the ma- master, he, his story is incredible. I was very touched by a story that all that tragedy happened, but yet he still looked through the light and he teaches life. 
you know, and light, you know. So for you guys to just give that blessing upon the world, everybody needs to, you know, take responsibility and just take that extra ex- effort to open up your eyes to something new because it can help you in the long run, you know. Um, we have to do something about it, Dr. Paul. We got to get these classes started and these seminars because there are children out here that are crying for help, crying for help. My son called me today, asked me, can I come pick him up? Because he's just another bully, you know, in basketball practice. They won't just leave him alone because he's different, you know, and it's just, it's a lot, Dr. Paul. We just got to, you know. Well, I want to tell you from a friend to friend, but also from a human to human, you're not alone. And as long as mm-hmm. you know that, you got to let your son know he's not alone. And as long as he right. knows that, we'll we'll all pull together because our long rope ties right. are strong and they'll tighten. Now, I right. understand that even in our darkest times, no matter what times we have when we're in our deepest of tears and we are crying and we feel like we're so alone and we're in so much pain, yes. it's very mm-hmm. difficult to us to see the other and the other life that we have. So I promise you, and right. you promise him, your son, he is not alone. I, and I did, I promised him that I told, you know, I can relate to that. You know, I was, I'm a victim myself because I'm different. He's not, he's, he got, a, I've been telling him that he's not by himself. He, it is other children and other people that think like him. So, yeah. Thank you, Miss Ashley. We'll see you next week. We'll talk to you next week. So I'm, I'm, I want to leave. I want to leave you off with this here at Bridges at the BBM Global Network. You know, my show is to bring you from here to there. Your your knowledge, your understanding, your understanding to an action, your action to a process. You're not alone. Freedom of thought is a human rights. The Arlington Memorial Bridge. Yes, it's, it's a national cemetery that crosses over the bridge. But I want you to take this with you. Don't let your darkness destroy you. Because your practice will bring you to the light. I'm your host, Dr. Paul, and you've been listening to Bridges. This has been Bridges with your host, Dr. Paul. Explore new ways to care for yourself and others in order to create a healthier and more vibrant community and world. Here on Bridges with Dr. Paul. been listening to the bbm global network the ideas views and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas views and opinions of the bbm global network company